by the black line rising dollar swiss verified by the price then testing the high point at 96 40s allowing us to make an arbitrage short 96 40s and then the price has obviously dropped off to 96 30s yeah 10 pips 10 pips and there's your short sell off that little arbitrage sell opportunity there. Yeah. Nice trade. Sure. Arbitrage. It's not a pure arbitrage. Of course it's not. It's, it can't be a pure arbitrage, but it is a, a, a good statistical arbitrage quality in this. And as the price drops, of course, and this changes a little bit of direction, I wouldn't be too shy in taking some of that money at 10 pips. And they're just saying, give me some of that cash at the moment. And then obviously you can look at the bigger macro read as it starts to develop. As it starts to develop. That bottom edge on equities um, starting to hold. We got a few sellers in the NASDAQ, which meant I was able to buy some 921 and a quarters, which is pretty good. I did put it in Ninja Trader as well, so I could show you. Um, but it'll give us a good excuse to diverge our attentions just a little bit into the Delta, give us a little break on this, whilst this buy trade is making us some, some good money on our own account and on Ninja Trader. Let's just take a little goosey gander at what we're talking about here. Okay, so why were we so bearish on the cash open? This chart will explain exactly why we were bearish on the cash open. Take a look and see. The first things we can obviously recognize, and the only thing that you need to recognize is relative value price areas. We can all agree that that high is about the same as this price area high here. From that information, can everybody agree with me, yes or no, that the delta is significantly higher on the cash open? Can we all agree that the delta is massively higher on the cash open, but the price is almost exactly the same? What does that mean is happening in terms of order flow? What does it mean is happening in terms of that order flow storyline? What it means is that somebody is selling an awful lot of stocks at that stage. Somebody is selling an awful lot of that buying, isn't it? Somebody's selling into that. And as a trader, we're looking at that as a proposition. And obviously, it's not exactly invisible because it's quite clearly visible on the book as well. It's quite clearly visible on the book. How's that buy doing on my NASDAQ, by the way, guys? Pretty good? So when we see that, we know this has probably got a very high, a very high probability of a short sell. So what have we been waiting for to buy that bottom edge? Now take a look. There was my buy trade. How good was that buy trade, by the way, guys? I mean, I know it wasn't a single buy trade. I shouted it several times. You know, so I'm not claiming that we were, you know, we bottom ticked this. I bought it several times on the way down during that process. I'm not claiming otherwise. But how good was it? Bloody brilliant, wasn't it? Because what we were waiting for was a seller. That's all we waited for. That's all we waited for was a seller coming in. Do you see it? So when the seller came in, that's all I started to look for was that seller. A seller came in here and I bought from them in there, right? That's all I bought there. I told you that. I shouted it. And then when we saw the buyers coming in too hard, what did I tell you? The price is going to trade, say, 30, remember? So when the buyer came in and they went ridiculous again on that trade, and I mean ridiculous. So when the buyer came in and they went ridiculous on that bit of business, we've just traded 70, by the way, guys. That's a 50-point move. That's a 50-point move. That's a $5,000 winner for me on a five lot there. Nice trade, right? So 
So when we see that seller coming in, but the buyers then came in too hard, we know this is going to now be a real money challenge. We thought they were going to run the 30s, and guess what? They ran the 30s without any trouble. And then the seller came back in, and I decided to go again. And I says, you know what? Let's go again and just take up some more business here. Too many buyers again on the second phase. So I've closed out the position now into that 970 print. And we can already recognize why I closed out the position through this conversation. Take a look. So this is what happened to that buy trade, right? So we bought in here, as you can see from this screenshot, we bought in there. The buyers came in ridiculously hard. This is a halfback trade area at 970. Halfback trade area at 970. And obviously there's too many buyers at 970 at that stage, as far as I'm concerned. So I thought, you know what, let's take our monies. Let's just take our monies at 970 and call it at that. And we've just polished off a $1,000 per contract move. $5,000 on a five lot, nice and easy trading, just using that order flow element to inform what it is that is happening in the background, to help inform the decision-making process that we are trying to do on the hard right-hand shoulder of this trade. You know, that's the whole point about following the order flow because it informs what we are trying to do with an actual decision in the background. That's the key to it.